Hi there, today I'm talking balls. Okay, more specifically, I'm talking about the balls in your bearings and the lubrication thereof. And the first important point to mention is uh, that if you, your uh, CNC came with any kind of manual, then maybe there's some information in there on how to lubricate your specific CNC machine. And therefore you may need to disregard this if you don't wish to void your warranty. If however you're like me and your machine came without any disruptions, then this may prove useful. It may also prove useful if it did come with instructions and you're not too happy with the results you're getting. And this may explain why. Okay, with that out of the way, the first thing we need to ask is, well, why do we lubricate? Uh, ignoring the obvious answer that it reduces friction, which is of course the main reason we do it. But in fact, what it also does is actually improve uh, the accuracy over a given period of time. And that's more essential for us as CNC operators. We want to know when we start the machine, it's doing its operation, that it's doing the same thing over and over. And obviously in that basis, you should have a regular uh, lubricating regime. So what about the frequency of lubrication? Well, that depends on the volume of throughput or volume of use you get from your specific machine itself. Now, if you're like us and other CNC shops who use it on a daily basis, then it's going to be far more frequent than the hobby use who might only use it a couple of times a month. Now, equally, if you're using it a couple of times a month, I would say, why not just check the lubrication at that point anyway and give it a quick squirt. It's sort of no harm, no foul. But if like us, you're using it on a daily basis, then you should be doing this on at least a weekly basis, looking at the, the lubrication. We, as part of our startup assessment, and I'm going to do a video on startups because I think it's an important topic on its own. But as part of our startup schedule every morning is we're listening to the machine and, and looking for any problems. And you know, if we feel it needs a little tweak, we'll give it a little tweak. But other than that, it's, it's a weekly routine for us. And of course, it goes without saying, keep your machine clean because that obviously helps uh, with the lubrication and obviously the, the lack of friction by keeping the dust and grime out of the bearings themselves. Okay, so let's get into the details of what to use and what not to use for lubricating on your CNC machine. We're going to start with the nasties first, work our way up to what I recommend you should be using and why. So the first real nasty you really must avoid as a lubricant for your bearings on your CNC has to be WD-40. It's absolutely perfect if you wish to unseize seized bolts or maybe as a cleaning agent and even if you spray it as a coolant when you're cutting metal parts. It's in fact a recipe of various uh, chemicals and the last thing you want to do is use it as a lubricant on your bearings because it will cause long-term damage. So WD-40, absolutely no. Next up on the naughty step is PTFE. Now, uh, some of you may or may not be familiar with this. This is PTFE is what uh, plumbers use in tape form for sealing joints. Um, in this instance, it's an aerosol uh, and you would spray on uh, and it does actually do a very good job of lubricating, just not for bearings. Uh, PTFE can contain and often contains graphite. Graphite is tiny particles which cause mayhem with your bearings. So do not use it for that. I can suggest to use it as an alternative to WD-40 when you're cutting aluminium. Being a dry spray, it's less messy. If you, pref you, know, if you like to have uh, something sprayed on that acts as a lubricant, PTFE is a good alternative for that. And then the next nasty has to be silicon grease. Now silicon grease, similar to PTFE, has, uh, often has graphite contained within it or various other concoctions. And again, they leave small parts in the bearings, uh, which can cause problems long term. So assign that to the bin in terms of lubricating your machine. And the final real no on the list has got to be uh, ordinary engine oil. Now, there is some exceptions to this that you can buy some engine oil that has zero additives in it. Uh, I've personally never seen it. It's just something I've been made aware of. Um, if that's the case and you've got some of that, then maybe that would work. Personally, I would avoid it. Again, like all the other um, items I've just mentioned uh, previously, engine oil typically has various additives in it for various reasons, and those additives don't do any good long-term on things like bearings, so uh, best avoided. Now then, I'm coming to my maybe list, or my maybe item now, and there's a couple of things with this. Uh, first of all, this is what one of these is what came in my machine. I got a, a tin of uh, white lithium grease with it. As I've already stated, I've got no destructions with my machine, so I have no idea what to do, what not to do. Uh, and it just arrived with this tin of spray. And I liberally applied it and it did absolutely nothing. 
Uh, and that's why I've got it on the maybe pile, because as far as I'm concerned, it didn't lubricate a damn thing and was pretty useless and ineffective. I will add to that that on the spray, it does mention on the tin that it solidifies. Well, from a, a personal perspective, I don't want anything that solidifies inside my bearings. Um, over a period of time, they're going to gum up and bind and you're going to add in friction and that's the last thing I want. So, uh, in hindsight, I wish I'd never used it, but I used it for a couple of years until I found out what I was doing wrong. Now, the flip side to that is another lithium grease. This is the typical automotive lithium grease that comes in the pots. This is the kind of thing you might apply to the wheel bearings on your car. Um, it's a much more uh, viscous, you know, it's a, a much softer viscous solution. Uh, it acts like a typical grease. Personally, for other reasons, I again would avoid using this. The main one is the, the fact that we're constantly cutting uh, parts that create a lot of dust and very small chips. The automotive lithium grease is an option if you prefer grease to oil. So now, we're on to what I use and why I use it. And uh, you'd be surprised to know, it's this little thing here. Okay, it's my little comedy bottle. Um, I do keep it in this, uh, in this little bottle for a reason. It, it fits in my drawers. Uh, it's a very small bottle. They're quite small drawers. Um, so it fits in there nicely. But this is machine oil. It's specially formulated for machines and bearings. The ideal uh, mix for bearings is what's referred to as ISO 68. And you'll often see that on the boxes and the packets for this kind of stuff. But it is available in various other formats and different viscosity levels under maybe called something like sewing machine oil, which is much more runny. That would work just as well. It wouldn't adhere for as long, so you might have to replace it more often. Uh, even clipper oil, men's clipper oil, uh, that used for keeping the blades going. Even shredders, you know, for your paper shredders, they often come with a, a bottle of oil, which is ideal for this. Just make sure that anything you use has zero additives within it. And most machine oils don't have any additives. Uh, do obviously read the label. Uh, so you want a zero additive machine oil. That is the absolute best thing you can use on your bearings. The other great benefit of this I found is and another problem that we had for a significant amount of time was constant clicking from our backlash nuts. And all the forums suggested they weren't appropriately attached, they were loose or some other mechanical fault with these backlash nuts that I could not trace or find, uh, you know, going about my machine. It was all appeared to be correct and as it was meant to be. Um, one day, whilst lubricating with this, the bearings, I decided to drop some on the backlash nuts just to see what would happen. And lo, the noise vanished. It took a few minutes, uh, but once it worked its way in, and we've never had any problem since we added that. And I, I don't put it in there regularly. I, you know, I put some in, I'll probably put it in every six months now. I think I'll probably put a little, little dash of that in there. It's reduced the irritating clicky noise that we had continuously with the machine. So that's what I use, a standard non-additive machine oil. I just happen to have it in a little comedy sized bottle. And now final observation that might also prove useful to many of you because it's widely available. And that is the old fashioned or well-known name brand three-in-one oil. And I think we all used to put on our bike trains when we were kids. So three-in-one oil is another alternative. As I say, it's widely available. Most hardware stores have some. You only need to buy the little bottle. You don't need a huge bottle and that will work perfectly well. Anyway, I've waffled enough again on this video. I wanted to try and keep it short. Um, please tell me what you think. Uh, obviously, if it is useful to you, please hit the like button. It does help. It gets the message out to more people. It's very much appreciated. And uh, I'll see you again soon for the next video. Do take care.